There is no success after that guy. You know what I mean? <laughs> but here's the thing. My buddy Philippe and I were talking about this. And if I screw up tonight, it doesn't matter because it means I have to come back for the next one and tell the story about how I screwed up on this one. So I've got, it's, it's good. My name is Stacy Bear, and you are all beautiful people because I can't see you, and that is fun for me. So, no shit, there I was, reading this letter in Portuguese. And I'm looking at this letter in Portuguese, and what it says that I can tell is that I need to appear before a judge for a trial and a sentencing for an egregious violation and commitment of great pain against the nation. I'm freaked. So I hand the note off to one of my colleagues, speaks Portuguese as, as one of his first languages, and he is not concerned at all. And he gives me the date and lets me know what I can bring. I can pick up a defense attorney. I can get some witnesses. And nonchalantly, he's like, yeah, and it's like 15 years or $150,000, like maybe 15, maybe just 15 years, maybe just $150,000. But like August 15th, that's where you need to be there. And so I feel my stomach drop, right? And the thing is, I'd been living in Angola at this point for almost a year of my life, and like any good potential white savior, I was like, I'm gonna drink, I'm gonna drink the local water and prove my mettle. And so in that moment, I'm like, is this just like the regular shits, or is this because I'm gonna spend 15 years in a jail in Angola? I don't know. So why am I in Angola, right? This is, so I went to college in Mississippi, and uh, yeah, yeah, thanks. That, that's normally not the reaction. Everyone's like, oh, shit. <laughs> we know where you were January 6th. <laughs> but that, you know, it's a different story, too. So anyway... So I'm in, when, I, when I told people I was going to Angola, they're like, you got a job at the penitentiary in Louisiana? And now here I am, and I'm like, I'm going to be in the penitentiary in Angola that that Angola was named after. So I, uh, I'd, been in the, I'd been in the Army for four years from 2000 to 2004, and things got a little subjective, and I wanted to have an objective experience. And so I was like, well, I'm going to go take landmines out of the ground because that feels really objectively good. And so I Googled landmine clearance. And it was shockingly easy to get a job at landmine clearance. And it's a, it's a supply and demand issue, right? <laughs> and if you take away anything from tonight, like how many times have you watched on, on TV this feels like maybe not the crowd that watches the same thing I do. I don't know. But, and you'll see the person and they'll like step on the landmine and they'll be like, oh no, there's a landmine, quick, put pressure on it. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> like if you're on a landmine and it doesn't blow up in like a quarter of a second, just step back and wait. Maybe scream or cry, but uh, that's not how it works. It's like a, um, when I actually wrote this talk and gave it to Anna to edit, she's like, nobody needs that level of detail. But it's just a circuit, so. So anyway, so I went down to Angola. I learned how to do explosive ordnance disposal. It was really cool. And one of the fun things about cleaning up after any post-war zone is there's a shit ton of things that go boom. And so it keeps people like me busy. And you start with landmines, and then you go into you know mortars and hand grenades, and then you work yourself up to air bombs, and that's really... F I mean, the job is boring by design, right? It shouldn't be an exciting job. But there are these moments of, of sheer terror or a lot of fun, depending on how you look at it. And so one of the things you want to do is create these big debts, right? So you dig these huge holes, you put lots of bombs in them, and you blow them all up at once and you use the kinetic energy of the other bombs, right, to reduce the cost of explosives. And so the guy who taught me this is a guy named Edomar Levy, and he was trained by the Tel Aviv Police Department and the Israeli Defense Force, and he trained me how to blow things up. And so 
along with a number of Angolan colleagues and, and senior Angolan supervisors. So I learned how to blow things up, and I'm getting really good at it. Like, I have found that thing, right? Like, oh, I'm really good at this. <laughs> and uh, really exciting about it. And so after a couple months, I think I'm getting pretty good. And Itamar lets me know he's coming down to check in on things. He doesn't, you know, he doesn't want to control any ops, but he'd like to see how I'm progressing. So I get super excited. My team gets super excited. And instead of like blowing things up in place, we are stockpiling everything, right? We're gonna get all, we're gonna, ah, oh, it's just gonna be the biggest, the biggest explosion. We've got a 500 pound bomb with our fuse removed. And, and when you stack all this stuff up, right, you, you put the little things down below and then you stack the big things on top, right? So that when it blows up, if for some reason it doesn't go well, you haven't just flung unexploded ordnance all over a field, right? So you want to go down. But the thing is, is my favorite part about the cake is the icing. So I decide to put illumination rounds, which are like military grade fireworks that help illuminate an evening so that you can see the enemy. And I'm like, well, these are fun. We'll put these on top. And so we find four of them, and we put them on top. And I'm like, this is going to be great. It's, he's going to be so excited. My team's excited. The day gets there. We've used a bulldozer, which is cool. We've, we've dug the hole. We put everything up. We've done the calculations, right? How far back do you got to be, right, for the explosion? I can see you all back here. So how far can you be? And then... <laughs> I'm like, we'll double it, right? And we, we lay out all the debt cord, and Itamar comes out, and the team is amazing. And one of the things that's been really weird about this whole process is nobody's around, right? And I'm like, man, how did we find this beautiful, flat grassland with nobody here? So we're trying to find people to tell, because we don't want them there, wink, wink, because we don't want them to get hurt, right? But we do want them to see how awesome we are, right? I'm a white guy in Africa. I need affirmation, right? This is, this is why I'm here. So... So we, we leveled, nobody laughed on that one. That, my, that hit too close to home. There's like a couple, there's a couple folks from the Peace Corps that are like, that's not why I went. <laughs> In a few years at your therapist, you'll understand it is, okay? <laughs> so, so anyway, we're, I was there because I was, keep in mind, I'm there like trying to make, you know, right from, for the wrongs of 2000 to 2004 which evidently you can talk about now. Um, so anyway, so I, I set this all up and we go back and there's like, the other thing that's really disappointing when you get an explosive ordnance disposal is there's no plunger, right? You'd think if you're gonna blow things up, you'd have like that thing. And it, it's just this little doohickey and you're just like, woo! And then the little charge goes down and it, and it goes all through the circuits and it hits these little sausages of explosion, and then there's this big, beautiful explosion. And I'm so excited, and I'm so proud to show Itamar. I am so proud to show Itamar. My team is excited. We have gone through all the calculations. In fact, the guy that I introduced you to already, who was reading in Portuguese, did the final calculations. He's a smart fella, I thought. And so we're ready to go, and the Land Rovers are, are facing away from us, right? So they're like here, and we're over here, and then you all are the bomb, literally, in this story. It's not a metaphor. And so, we kaboom! This huge explosion, and immediately, this is the great thing about explosions, immediately you know if you fucked up, right? And, and stuff is flying over my head, and I'm like, no! And so we're running to the Land Rover, and we get in, and as we're running to the Landover, the entire field is on fire. And at this point, I remember watching the alum rounds go up. And as they go up, I realize they're not illumination rounds. They are white phosphorus, which burns like no other thing. Like, like water spreads the fire with white phosphorus. And I get into the truck, and by the way, I can't fit into a Land Rover Defender, so it's not like I can jump in and drive away. I have to jump in and just sit and wait, because I'm too big. So, I'm, so I disassociate completely. I'm like, Itamar, did you notice that those were white phosphorus <laughs> rounds flying over us? That was unexpected. <laughs> Itamar, 
We set all of Angola on fire. We have to leave now. So we drive away, and Angola is in flames. In flames. A new national park as we drive by, we see the sign. The country has been in civil war from 1975 to 2003. They have a national park. No wonder nobody's around. I have set it on fire, and I am now staring at 15 years or $150,000 of fine in an Angolan prison. Have a great night.